Hi everyone, my name is Sanjana Kandiraju and I'm a senior at International Academy Central. And over the past eight weeks, I've been working in Dr. Zong's laboratory. And my project is on the role of IFT-172 in Leydig cells. So the overall objective of my project is to generate IFT-172 knockout Leydig cells in order to explore its effect on the cell line itself hormone production, and germ cell development. So before I go into my project, I would like to give a little bit of background information on some of the terms I will be using. So what exactly are Leydig cells? Leydig cells are somatic cells located in the male testes, and I will specifically be using the MA10 Leydig cell line. And the main function of Leydig cells are to produce uh, sex hormones, such as testosterone necessary for sperm formation or spermatogenesis. And on the slide, you can see a picture of Leydig cells our lab took. Now I'll be talking a little bit about what cilia is. Uh, cilia are hair-like organelles uh, located all over the surface of a cell, and they're similar to the organelle called the flagella. And cilia has two main functions. Number one is that their movement and vibration is able to give cells motility. And number two, it is also used to transport cellular materials. And if there are any abnormalities in cilia, this can give rise to an array of disorders that are characterized as celiopathies. So the image on this slide shows a diagram of a cilium. And on this diagram, you can see the IFT raft. So the purpose of the IFT raft is to transport proteins down the microtubules to the cilia in order for cilia to uh, be formed and to maintain cilia, cilia itself. So that's the connection between IFT and cilia. Next, what exactly is IFT? So IFT is the intraflagellar transport complex. And there are 22 IFT components that have been discovered, including IFT-172. And the IFT complex is highly expressed in ciliated cells, particularly in the testes, as well as in the trachea and in the brain. And the IFT complex is essential for cilia formation, as we saw with the IFT raft, as well as male germ cell development. Um, and specifically IFT-172, um, it's a gene that translates for two major proteins. One is a full length 172 KDA protein, and the other is a smaller 130 KDA protein. And both are highly expressed in the testes and in somatic cells, including the Leydig cells. So in the Western blot at the top, you can see two strong protein bands at the 170 KDA and 130 KDA markers. And this is under the testes column. And then in the Western blot on the bottom, you can see a similar pattern for a Leydig cell line. So overall, this suggests that uh, IFT-172 proteins are highly expressed in Leydig cells and in cells in the testes. So how exactly are we going to be knocking out the IFT-172 gene in uh, mammalian cells? So we will be using the technique called the CRISPR-Cas9 technique. And the first step in this process is to create a target sequence for IFT-172 through a website called Thermo Fisher. So IFT-172 is a long sequence of nucleic acids. And for the CRISPR-Cas9 technique, you can only use a short sequence. So that's why we create a target sequence. Next, the company will send us back the single-stranded forward and reverse oligonucleotides of our target sequence. And we will have to anneal them or bind them together to create double-stranded DNA. Our next step is to clone the double-stranded DNA, insert into the GeneArt CRISPR nucleus vector provided by the GeneArt CRISPR kit. So we are inserting our uh, double-stranded DNA into this vector, and it'll fit right where the arrow points to in between those overhangs, sort of like a Lego piece. And then on our vector uh, is the OFP or the orange fluorescent protein. And this will help us later on to identify our positive cells because if a cell has the plasmid in it, it'll create these proteins that fluoresce an orange color. So next, how exactly is IFT going to be knocked out using this technique? So a guide RNA will bind to our IFT-172 target sequence. And this can be at many locations on the IFT-172 uh, gene, which is why we can have multiple target sequences. 
So all a guide RNA needs is an NGG, which is a through three nucleic acid sequence that contains any nucleic acid, acid followed by a guanine and another guanine. And then this complex acts as a tag for Cas9 and Cas9 will find this complex and it'll cut IFT172, which will inactivate the gene and it can no longer produce its proteins. So in the image on this slide, you can see that there's a DNA sequence which represents IFT172 and then and the uh, yellow represents the guide RNA that will bind to its complementary IFT172 sequence. And then the red structure is Cas9 and it'll cut the gene. So after we have inserted the knockdown of IFT172 into the gene R CRISPR plasmid, we have now created a vector, we have now created a plasmid. So the next step is to transform our ligated plasmids with IFT172 knockdown into bacteria. Then we will grow the bacteria colonies on an, uh, we will then grow uh, bacteria colonies on an ampicillin resistant LB agar plate, which is an antibiotic. And then we will pick up eight white bacteria colonies and grow them further in LB broth with ampicillin. Next, we will isolate the plasmid DNA, and then we will sequence the plasmids through a website called GeneWiz to confirm that our plasmids have the correct IFT172 sequence. So the three agar plates that you see are three different locations at which the CRISPR-Cas9 technique took place. And the image on the bottom shows our sequence. So the nucleic acid sequence on the top is our target sequence that we created. And the sequence on the bottom is what we received from GeneWiz. And as you can see, they are a 100% match, which means that we can move forward with the next part of our process. So after we have confirmed that our plasmids have the correct insert, we can now transvect the plasmids into Leydig cells. So we will grow the MA10 Leydig cells and then we will transvect them. And in order to transvect them, we have to combine a few things. So the first is DMEM F12 containing 10% FBS, which is essentially a cell culture medium. And then next we will add in a transvection reagent, which will help the plasmid enter the cell by making it more lipid soluble. So the plasmid is foreign DNA, so it needs a little bit of help in order to enter the cell. And then we will also mix in the plasmid DNA itself, and we will allocate this mixture to a six-well plate that contains MA10 cells. So uh, the images of, on this slide show the transvected MA10 Leydig cells that were grown in uh, DMEM F12, 10% uh, FBS, 0% horse serum, and 5% carbon dioxide. However, the images show that these cells did not grow as well as they should have grown. So on the top, you can see that there is a red cell, but it's not because of the orange fluorescent proteins, but instead it's because of the autofluorescent dead cells. Um, and the image on the bottom more clearly shows how a lot of these cells died. So any circular cells you see are examples of dead cells. So with that, we decided to change our cell culturing conditions. So we have now changed the conditions in which we grow the MA10 cells in before transvection. So now we are growing them in DMEM F12, 5% FBS, 2.5% horse serum, and 3.5% carbon dioxide. And after changing these cell culturing conditions, the MA10 cells are growing much better. So in the image, you can see that there are a lot more live cells as well as a lot more positive cells. So two of the cells that I've circled are examples of cells that are fluorescing a red color, which could mean that the plasmid successfully entered the Leydig cells and are now producing those orange fluorescent proteins. This could also mean that they are autofluorescent dead cells, but overall, after changing the the conditions, our cells are growing a lot better. So our conclusions is that we have successfully created plasmids that have IFT172 knocked out in them, and we have also optimized the conditions for cell culturing the MA10 Leydig cells. 
So in the future, we will transvect more newly grown MA10 cell line uh, cells with, plas uh, with our plasmids. And then we will sort the positive cells using the orange fluorescent protein uh, to generate a stable cell line. And after we have generated a stable cell line, we will then test the positive IFT172 knockout cells using specific antibodies in a Western blot to analyze proteins. And ideally, we shouldn't see any IFT proteins because the gene was knocked out. And after uh, we test this, we can then analyze sex hormone levels such as testosterone to see if it's affected by the knockdown of IFT-172. So we will measure both cell medium and lysate under basal stimulation and conditions. And if there is a change in sex hormone levels, we know that one of the major functions of Leydig cells is affected by IFT, the knockdown of IFT-172, and that can in turn affect sperm formation and male fertility. Lastly, we will generate Leydig cell-specific IFT-172 knockout mice to analyze in vivo function. So that is it for my presentation. Thank you all so much for listening. And I would like to give a big thanks to Dr. Zong, who is my PI, Candice, uh, Dr. Lee, and everyone in the Discovery to Cure program. You have all been such vital parts in my end product here. Um, and now I will leave room for any questions. Thank you. Do you have any questions over here? No. <laughs> <laughs> any questions for you guys? We don't want to put you in the spot. <laughs> you have good friends. Very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.